Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan Grek, and on today's episode, my gladiator is not quite ready, so we can't get started on the build just yet. I did go and have a look at it at the dealer, and it's everything I was hoping it would be, and a whole lot more. Let me tell you, it's pretty shiny. But anyway, before we get into the whole Gladiator build series, now that I'm here in Australia, I'll spend this video telling you about the route that I'm planning around Australia, some of the highlights I'm really looking forward to, and the activities I plan to do while I'm moving around Australia. So if you're wondering where I'm going, what the highlights of the trip are going to be, stick around, I'll get into all the details right now. So I've spent a lot of my life thinking about driving around Australia and having adventures. And so rather than an actual route and certain roads, I've always thought about particular highlights or places that I've always dreamed of going. And of course, there's other YouTubers too. There's Ronnie Dahl and there's those crazy guys from four wheel drive 24 by seven who are always out doing gnarly, gnarly four wheel driving routes. And you guys know me, I'm not so big into the four wheel driving. I'm kind of more into the wilderness, get remote. In Australia, they call it long-term touring. I call it overlanding. This idea of let's get remote and stay out there for weeks at a time as remote as we can possibly get. So for me, the highlights really revolve around that. And the first one that I can't wait to get to is Fraser Island. So this is the world's biggest sand island and it's just off the coast of Queensland, kind of up towards Brisbane on the East Coast. And so this island is actually enormous. It even has a petrol station on the island. You catch a ferry to get over there. And then you can drive basically all the way around the perimeter. So you can drive on the beach. There's big sand dunes you have to tackle. There are some sections where you have to be careful. You drive at low tide, but if high tide comes, you're gonna get stuck or you're gonna get washed away. Um, and in the interior too, there's freshwater lakes and you can drive in there and then go swimming. And there's designated camping and it's just amazing wilderness. And so I'm really, really looking forward to that. And that's one of the trips that I, fingers crossed, my uncle Ron will be able to come along for. That's gonna be a lot of fun. A bit further north from there, the very northeast tip of Australia, this is called Cape York. And from an Australian's perspective, this is the kind of stuff that legends are made of. In the US, you guys kind of romanticize Alaska. In Australia, we romanticize Cape York. It is super wild. It's actually tropical rainforest. And there's an old road called the old telegraph track. People say the old telly track that runs right up to the top. And it has some of Australia's craziest four wheel driving. Probably the most famous four wheel drive obstacle in Australia called Gunshot and a ton of river crossings where I fully expect water to come over the bonnet, the hood of the Jeep, stuff like that, mud, mud, mud. Uh, a few big river crossings, one that needs a ferry, and that should take about a week, but you know, I'm never in a rush, so I'll be really happy if it takes two weeks and I can explore all over. While I'm up there as well, there's an offshoot track called the Frenchman's Track. It's only a couple of days long, but it should be amazing because hardly anyone takes it, and it just goes sort of across from east to west. It'll take me from the middle of nowhere to the middle of nowhere, Again, with a couple of really cool river crossings, tons of sand, tons of wilderness spots. So all of Cape York to me, it's kind of something I've dreamed of for a long, long time. I can't wait to get up there, roam around. There's amazing beaches and beach camping. There's all the inland stuff. Of course, there's crocodiles. It starts to get pretty exotic and remote. So even for me, it'll be a part of Australia I just know nothing about. I've never seen it. I've never experienced it. So I'm really excited about that. As well as that, of course, there are a couple of deserts that I really am excited to check out. The main one is called the Simpson Desert, one of the biggest deserts on the continent, one of the biggest deserts in the world. And it is enormous sand dunes and it's very, very remote. Most people spend about four or five days driving across and there's a whole bunch of different routes you can take depending on what you're looking for. If you want more sand dunes, if you want more remote, if you want seldom visited, so probably won't see any other vehicles. No one's been that way for a long time. And I haven't yet decided which route I'm going to do. It might depend on if someone's gonna come with me, if I'll be in a convoy with vehicles, who knows what time of year it'll be. Um, but I can say for sure, I'm not going to rush. I really wanna take my time. And one of my goals actually is just to spend an entire day and not drive anywhere. Just see what it's like to spend 24 hours 
out in the middle of one of the most remote places in the entire world, definitely the star photography is going to be crazy. While I'm there, that's kind of close to central Australia, I feel like I have to head over and check out Uluru, the huge big rock that's in the middle of Australia. And no doubt about it, this trip, it's going to incorporate some touristy things as well. That's part of these trips when you go overlanding. Yeah, I went on a tourist excursion in Guatemala and I poked lava with a stick. I went to see the Perito Moreno Glacier in Argentina, one of these enormous glaciers in the world that was carving. These are touristy things to do, but overlanding is a blend of tourist stuff, travel, four-wheel drive, camping. It's kind of all of that blended together. And here in Australia, I mean, I'm really looking forward to scuba diving on the Great Barrier Reef. Definitely Uluru is going to be an enormous highlight. Just near Uluru is also the Olgas, another really stunning rock formation. And of course, lots of national parks as well. So Australia has very diverse national parks, just like the US. And basically, I'll visit as many of them as make sense. So if I'm in the region and there's a national park and everyone says it's great, of course I'm going to go there. Yes, I'll probably have to pay to get in. You probably pay for camping. There'll be other people around. So it's not like my whole trip is planned to be enormous wilderness and remoteness. It's planned to be all the enjoyable highlights, all the things that I really want to see and the things that I want to do as well. So that's kind of central Australia. Then when you start getting up into the northwest of Western Australia, this is probably the remotest part of the entire continent. And so there's a huge big peninsula up there. There's the Gibb River Road, which has ancient Aboriginal cave paintings and waterfalls and tons of side stuff to explore. Over there as well, there's a road called the Canning Stock Route, which is one of the most remote roads in the entire world. It's about 1600 kilometers, about a thousand miles of pure wilderness through the desert nothing, no infrastructure, no people, no anything. So I really, really hope to drive the Canning and some of the design decisions on the Gladiator will enable it to travel that kind of distance. Right now though, as far as I know, the Canning is actually closed for COVID. So I'm keeping a really close eye on that. And as soon as it opens, I want to apply for a permit and lock that in. Chances are I'll probably wind up doing it about this time next year because right now it's winter in Australia. So it's probably only 30 or 35 Celsius every day, instead of pushing up towards 50 Celsius, like 120 Fahrenheit. So the canning will be amazing as well. And in fact, all of Western Australia, I've never even been there. So I can't wait. Northern Territory as well, another huge territory in Australia. I've never even seen it. And on that, lots of people are asking, you know, how much of Australia have I actually seen? From a landmass perspective, I would say I've seen about 10% of it. That's it. So I've seen way more of the US, way more of Canada than I have seen of Australia. In fact, I've probably seen more of Botswana than I've seen of Australia. So that's part of the reason I'm here. That's part of the reason I'm so excited. As well as all of that on the mainland, I'm really looking forward to getting down to Tasmania as well. So this is the island off southeastern Australia, uh, and it is a state unto itself, and it has huge old growth forests. It has some amazing remote four wheel driving, tons of waterfalls, some of the biggest waves in the world for surfing. I'm not gonna surf them, but it would be cool to have a look. Uh, also some beaches that I should be able to surf at, although the water I hear is exceptionally cold because from there, it's a straight shot down to Antarctica. Uh, but Tasmania, I think is going to be a huge highlight for me, which brings me to activities that I'd like to do as well while I'm moving around. Huge one that I'm always excited about is hiking. And Australia has a ton of hiking from little day hikes just to get to a waterfall or to a lookout or whatever, all the way up to sort of five, six, seven day hikes that travel you, you know, across a distance. And one of them in Tasmania is called the Overland Track. And it really does cross over a good portion of Tasmania. And it goes up into the high Alpine where in winter right now, there would actually be snow on those mountains. Uh, when I'm there, I'm planning it in summertime. So there won't be any snow, but it will look a lot like the Pacific Northwest or British Columbia, really beautiful big trees and actual mountains. Yes, Australia has mountains. So hiking will be a huge highlight. Obviously surfing as well. Part of the reason for a roof rack, I'm bringing surfboards. I can't wait to get out and surf. Beaches that I've heard of, beaches that I've never heard of, try different breaks, see if I can finally get good at surfing. 
I've never really put in the time to progress sort of beyond beginner, beginner approaching intermediate. So with any luck, I'll get way up past intermediate. And as well as that too, something I wanted to bring along was my mountain bike from Canada. But I ride a size large and it wasn't going to fit in the back of the Gladiator unless I took off the front and the back wheel, both at the same time. Then I'd have to find some way to mount it, somewhere to put the tires. And because it's so tall as well, it was gonna change my whole rear canopy setup. So it started to look like a whole lot of trouble. Putting it on the outside of the vehicle, something I'm not interested in at all. I'm fully aware that the dust and the sun will just destroy something like a high quality mountain bike if it's on the outside of a vehicle. So I wasn't gonna do that. So I've decided in the end, I'm not actually bringing my own mountain bike. What I'll do instead is I'll rent a mountain bike whenever I'm in these meccas. And Australia actually does have chairlift mountain biking now at the ski resorts during the summer. It also has places in Tasmania, there's a couple of them now, where you can pay to get a shuttle. So they'll drive you to the top of the mountain, drop you off with your bike, and then it's a couple of hour descent all the way back down to the bottom, maybe down at ocean level. So in my mind, that sounds amazing. I positively can't wait to get there and see what it's all about and learn. And again, I'm not the world's greatest mountain biker. I'm not gonna go and huck myself off big cliffs, but if there's a nice meandering trail that's kind of like continuous downhill, that's what I'm all about and that's what I'll be riding. So you can see I've got a whole bunch of highlights kind of like specked out around the country. And then I figure there'll be a lot of stuff in between to fill it in with. When I need to do a laundry day, when I need to use the internet, I'll probably camp in a town in a paid campground because I can get all those things done. And while I'm there, I'll be beachside. Hey, I should go surfing. So maybe get up at sunrise, go surfing, come back, work on the laptop, edit some photos, do some laundry, whatever I need to do, then go surfing again at sunrise. That sounds like a pretty good rest day to me. Do that and then head back out into the wilderness and get remote. So that's the really high level overview of what I plan. And I certainly plan to visit every state and try to get to as many iconic locations as possible. But on that, I'm not an expert. I haven't actually lived here for 15 years. I haven't been to so many of these places. So I'd really love to hear your input. If you've got ideas about where I should go, if you've been here or if you've seen videos or you've had friends come here, please do leave a comment down below. Let me know where you'd like me to get to. And even if I don't reply to every comment, I promise you, I'm copying and pasting them into my huge big spreadsheet. I'm putting pins on maps and I'm slowly planning out the things I need to get to. And more than anything else, when people tell me you really have to get to this cool location, that to me locks it in and I'll go there and I'll film it and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So please do leave a comment down below. Let me know where I should get to. So obviously I'm waiting very impatiently for the Gladiator to get ready and that's right around the corner. And if you'd like to be the first to see the build, the first to see the vehicle and to get a whole bunch of behind the scenes content from my trip around Australia, head over to Patreon. All these people over there are supporting me and they're helping me bring you all this content and all the videos and all the information that are forthcoming about my Australia trip. So they're not only getting the info, they get direct access to me as well. So I reply to every single comment, every single message. And something else I'm offering Patreons as well is vehicle consulting and trip consulting. So if you're thinking about building a vehicle to drive up to Alaska, or if you've dreamed of driving down to Argentina on the Pan American Highway, we can organize a one-on-one -on -one video chat, just you and me, and we can run through all of your questions, all your concerns. I can help you learn about what you need for the border crossings, safety, Whatever it is you're worried about, whatever you'd like to learn more about, over on Patreon, my supporters there have access to me and they can get all of that information. So if that's something that interests you, something you've always wondered about, head over to Patreon, have a look at the kind of stuff I'm offering to my supporters there. And just $5 a month is the lowest tier of support and then it works up the levels and you get more and more perks, including GPS track logs of where I'm going, early access to my videos is something I'm offering now, all kinds of things like that. So thanks again to all of those people on Patreon. Thanks again so much for watching. You can see how stoked I am to be here in Australia and be gearing up for my big third expedition. This has been six or eight months in the planning now, and it's actually felt really surreal. And up until now, it's been like an abstract idea. And suddenly 
Now there really is a big Jeep Gladiator and I'm about to set off on this trip of my dreams around my home country. So stick around, tons more content coming. Maybe I'll bump into you on the road.